Hi, I'm Megan. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I'm back for another Friday Sews video. Today I'm going to keep it short and snappy because we have a construction crew coming over to work on our building. They've been here all week and they'll probably be here all summer, which is pretty unfortunate because they're working on balcony reconstruction, so we can't actually open our balcony and go outside, and it is also getting a bit steamy in here. Um, Shouldn't complain though, the work needs to be done and they're doing a very fast job from what I can tell. It's just so loud. They're drilling concrete and rebar all day from about 8.30 until five um, and, and they're working hard, but it is, it is like living inside a jackhammer. It's good times. Anyway, I wanted to come on quickly um, as soon as I ship my kid off to camp so that I could catch you up on what I've been sewing. Um, I have three projects and a little bit of chat to share with you today. So. Earlier this month, I tested the new Pattern Emporium summer or warm weather pattern releases. So Kate put out two patterns earlier this summer um, that are more of a summer or warm weather focus. And then she's just released one this week. It's a sweater, so it's, it's for a cooler temperature. And I didn't test the sweater pattern. It's a cardigan called the Grab a Cuppa cardigan, and it's so cute. It's boxy and oversized, and I'll, I'll make it later when it cools down. Um, but right now, I am enjoying the brief Canadian summer and it is gorgeous um, so again it is early so apologies I usually do my hair and makeup but this is this is my summer mom look so right now I'm wearing the endless summer tee from pattern emporium that I made last summer this one's made out of double brushed polyester and the stripes are a little bit wonky because um, I didn't quite get the neckband but uh, so if that's bothering you throughout the video please note it also bothers me but here here we are Anyway, so the summer pattern that I did test is the, the two. So it's a double release. It was a dress and a camisole. And they're very similar, but they're actually the bodice fit is different. So the first one that I made was the Heartstrings dress. And so it's a strappy sundress with a, an elasticated strap and a bound neckline. Um, a semi-fitted bodice and then an A-line skirt and so I made I'm going to show you the one that I made in testing and I don't have any photos of it but it it is lovely this is what I made in testing um, and I haven't quite finished it I just pinned the straps in place because I want to redo the straps but I made this one out of a tie-dye this is a bamboo rayon spandex or jersey um, and it's got a strappy neckline so the pattern comes with the option to do a shelf bra, um, a high back or a low back, and you can place the straps wherever you like so you can crisscross them or um, tie them and sort of do like a racer back or just straight. This one I made for my fit is just unlined. It doesn't have a shelf bra. Um, and I am really going to go back and finish this. So this one, um, after Kate saw the fits, she adjusted it a bit, so the straps placement moved in a bit, but I intend to wear this one as a beach cover-up, so it doesn't bother me that the um, straps sit a little bit further out, because I'll have a visible bathing suit strap underneath it anyway. But it's just light and breezy and perfect for summer. So this is the first one that I worked on, and apologies, I don't have photos of it, but I do have photos of the final dress that I made. So this is the final version I made. Um, I made it out of double brushed polyester that I bought from Water Tower, Water Tower Textiles in Ontario. Um, they ship so fast. Like, I'm always surprised how quickly their fabric arrives on my doorstep. Um, so this one I did put in a shelf bra. I used Power Mesh that I also got from Water Tower Textiles. So the inside, it's got a shelf bra. Um, with this is plush back lingerie elastic on it um, and I just surged it on and then it flips down um, just one single layer of power mesh and the shelf bra and then I used double brush polyester for the dress and I used a, a remnant piece of um, cotton like cotton spandex jersey um, for the straps and the binding because you need that binding to have really good resilience and I find it kind of tricky to work with double brush polyester for this type of thing it just doesn't seem to to snap back into place correctly anyway I adore this dress I think um, it it's comfortable I was really worried when I saw the line drawings because it's a lot of it's a lot of bare skin up top. Um, and when a strappy sundress like this, whenever I've tried them on, they're often very snug fitting. And I just didn't think I would find that comfortable in the summer when it's so hot. 
and I also didn't feel like I'd be comfortable in it confidence wise. Um, so when I put my test on, I was, I was so pleased. It's a semi fitted bodice. So it's not loose. It is fitted to your shape, but it's not tight. It's not constricting the waist. It's wasted. Um, it isn't snug. It's not, I don't find it's got, it might have a tiny bit of negative ease just because of the nature of the, the knit fabric, but it fits so nicely. Um, I wore this to the office and I didn't wear shapewear underneath it. And I wear shapewear basically anytime I leave my house. Um, I just like the way it feels. It makes me feel more confident and I, I just I like it. Um, but I didn't, I just wore a pair of like slip shorts because thighs and, um, I was so comfortable all day. It, it was super lovely to wear. It's quite low cut. And so the next time I make this, um, what I'm going to do is I will probably, um, I shortened the straps, but I'll, I'll probably look to maybe lengthening the shelf bra a little bit more so it holds secure underneath so I can raise the bodice. This time the shelf bra, though I did add a little bit of length because I have a larger cup size than my upper bust, um, I could have added more length to it because my bust line doesn't sit as high as it used to, you know. So anyway, I love this dress. I think it's a fantastic fit pattern. It is one of those classy, elegant staples. It's never going to go out of style. Um, it makes for a wonderful um, formal occasion. You could get some really beautiful knit fabric. You could do it in a stretch of velvet if it was a cooler climate. Um, I can't imagine wearing stretch velvet when it's hot and oh, like I would just, I would, I would melt. Um, but anyway, you could do like a shimmery knit. You could even use some of those athletic knits that are um, sequined. It just would be stunning and so comfortable. So you can do it with the shelf bra. You can do it without the shelf bra. So just a single layer, or you can line the bodice. You've got lots of options. It also would make a beautiful nightgown. So um, this is the type of thing that I love to wear um, to bed. And so I think I am gonna make a few more that are a little bit shorter. This one I cut at the long length to make it a maxi, but on me it's more of a midi because I'm five foot nine. So um, that is the dress. And then I did make the matching camisole as well. So within that pattern release, Kate put out a camisole and they look like they would be the same pattern just with length added to the bodice of the camisole. But the camisole actually has um, a snugger fit. So the camisole fits more snugly. It's a fitted camisole, um, but the same sort of design style. So the same lines. So it's got the strappy camisole. Um, you can put a shelf bra in it. You can leave it um, unlined. You can do a lining. For this one, I made a single layer. I love wearing a camisole under just about everything that I wear all the time, but I always find them, they just don't fit. So they're either too low cut or they ride up. Or they don't fit in the bust because I need them big enough to fit on the hip or they fit in the bust and they're too tight on the hip and I feel like a sausage. So this is the perfect camisole for me. So I am gonna make a ton of these in every color. I'm gonna look for some nice wool jersey to make one for the winter. Um, I don't know that I would wear this alone, but maybe when it gets quite hot. So what I did was um, I assembled it all in my serger and then I cover stitched the straps and the binding it's all really nice. You can see I used like a contrasting thread because that's what I had in my looper, but I think it's okay. Um, and one single layer and I made the long length. And so I throw this on underneath a blazer, a uh, knit blazer for work from home days and it's very comfortable and really cute. Again, also would be great for pajamas. So the straps on both the camisole and the dress have elastic in them, which is something that I thought um, at first was a bit intimidating and it did take me like by the third time I nailed it. The first one doesn't look great and I'm going to redo the binding on the, the test dress I made in the tie dye. My final dress with the swirly coral fabric, the straps look great. The cotton spandex is definitely easier to work with. And then by the time I did the camisole, like I, I think I nailed that. Um, so the fact that it has clear elastic in the straps means it's got that snap and recovery and it holds its shape. So you don't want it to droop throughout the day. I have made a similar camisole pattern in the past that did that it's stretched out throughout the day that it just the fabric just couldn't hold. Um, I was asking it to hold a lot and it, and it didn't, but the elastic is brilliant. So they don't stretch out of shape. Um, 
the really professional finish, I think. I got a really good job and and I do. I quite I quite like the fit and it was easy. I was surprised by how easy the binding is. So you put um, a binding along the front neckline or a band along the front neckline and then you bind the straps and the back binding. It's all one piece. So you've inserted the elastic through the strap part and you can see I still have my extra strap and there. So you do the straps and then you continue to attach um, the binding to the back, do the finish the other strap with elastic in it, and then you sew your straps, you get your strap placement, and then you sew them on. And um, this one, I left my straps because I wasn't quite sure I had the placement of the straps right, even after I had pinned it, and I am going to adjust it because one of them came out way longer than the other, which is a bit wonky, but um, it works. So anyway, I really like this pattern. I think both are winners. I'll put links in the description box below. I do have an affiliate link. So if you use my link, I get a small commission, but feel free if you've already purchased it to tell me what you thought about it um, or just purchase it directly from the website and Google it. Don't go on that link if you'd prefer to do that. But um, yeah, the, this double release I think is, is targeted towards summer weather, hot weather, but definitely these are basics that I will wear all year round. I think that the dress can be made, like I said, in a sparkly velvet for Christmas or like the holiday season if you live in a cold weather climate. Or you could throw it on under, like with a t-shirt underneath it, um, and it looks a little bit more like a pinafore. I wore tons of dresses like that in the late 90s. Tons of dresses. Um, or you could put a jacket or blazer over top. I did wear it to two events. I wore it into my office for a meeting, and I ended up wearing that dress to my dad's memorial. Um, the day of the memorial, it was very hot. Um, and I will not surprise you if you've been through this type of thing. I had big plans for what project I was going to work on. And as the day of the memorial got closer, it just, everything became overwhelming and I didn't get the dress that I was working on finished. So I was really happy to have something that made me feel so confident and so beautiful. And it was the right mood. And I, I was happy with the dress and, and what I wore. And I intend to wear it again this weekend. We're going out for our anniversary. So that dress is going to get a ton of wear this summer. Speaking of projects that I'm right in the middle of, so I am in the middle of one of the dresses I talked about last time I made a video um, and I brought it out to show you. So I have seen these project bags. This is one is from Amazon. It's just a plastic zipper top bag. Um, and lots of different YouTubers use them, especially the ones that are UK based. So I think this must be a product that's more widely available there, but I had to hunt through Amazon to find it. Um, and I'm using them now to store my projects as I'm working on them. So I had been keeping my projects in large Ziploc bags, like freezer bags, and they're just not big enough for a dress this size. And this way I can keep um, the cutout pattern, the, the project, any extra thread that I need, the instructions all in one place, and then I can just put it away because I was finding I was starting to misplace pieces of my projects or um, the pattern, I would put it away and then just have the cutout pieces tucked into a Ziploc bag and then I would go and look at it and be like, which one's the front and did I mark it? So this way everything is together and I can tuck it away. It stays clean and dust free. Um, but I am working on the Gilbert Top sundress hack um, that's available on their blog. So uh, Sam from the Purple Sewing Cloud did a guest post on their blog about how to add a gathered skirt to the Gilbert top from Helen's Closet. And I am making some pretty good progress on it. So I decided to use this bright colored cotton poplin fabric that I showed you last time to make the dress. Um, as I started to sew it together, I used every scrap of it I had. So I cut out the bodice and then I used every single bit to cut the length of the skirt because I wanted as much skirt as I could. And then I realized that I had only cut out one yoke and it has a burrito rolled yoke. So I had to use something else to cut the inner yoke facing. So I was a little bit disappointed, but no one will see that except for me and you. Um, so that's okay. So I have completed it up to, um, I just turned the bodice inside out. So I just need to top stitch the placket um, and put the sleeves in and do the side seams and put the buttons on and I have already assembled the skirt so then I just need to sew the two together so that's my intention today to do that um, and then I'll have this dress to wear as well and I I'm really excited I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be great it's I just can't 
stop looking at all the beautiful colors in this and the really pop off the black background um, and it's going to be light and breezy for summer and yeah hopefully I'll finish it today and then I can wear it out this weekend um, so yeah and I can't wait to show it to you as well because I did make some changes from what the blog post suggested particularly for the math on how to cut up the skirt I'm interested to see if the changes that I made have a different visual impact than the ones that are written in the instructions. Okay, so I have that. Um, and yeah, this is another, this is another one of those bag project bags. So this, I just have a cutout pattern that I recently made inside the bag and I'll just file the pattern later today. Last week I had some time off and I spent some time reorganizing my fabric stash. Um, things had gotten a bit out of control with sort of the remnant pieces of fabric after I'd finished a project or test garments that I knew I wasn't going to wear. Um, so I reorganized it, cleaned everything up. I pulled patterns out of, sometimes I have a bad habit of I'll sew the pattern and if I don't file it right away in a pattern envelope, then the pattern pieces are in a bag, like a freezer bag, or they're all over the place. So I have organized my system and everything looks good. Um, I took all of my remnant Jersey and French Terry pieces from projects that I've made over the last year and I rolled them up and they're all in a bin so I can look at them instead of a stack, um, which I think is gonna be a nice way when I wanna make something and I need a little bit of Jersey for one of my kids or the binding or something, I'll be able to look into the bin and quite quickly identify what I have. Did some cleanup of my notions, got rid of empty spools of thread, that type of thing. Um, so it's, everything is fresh and I am hoping to film a tour of my sewing space soon. I realized I probably don't need to buy fabric for the next like two years, but I'm going to anyway. Um, but it was also a good project to go through and get a sense for what have I used, what do I have lots of, what do I have not a lot of, and have my tastes changed over the past couple of years that I've been sewing. So yeah, it was just nice to visit my fabric and say hello to it and touch it all. Um, it is our 10th wedding anniversary next week, and so my husband and I are going away for the first time without our children. My son is four, and I have never spent a night away from him, and that is not, not by design. That's just how it worked out. Um, and so he, is have, he has a sleepover, and my daughter has a sleepover, and I am crossing my fingers that we don't get a call in the middle of the night that we have to come back for them, but I think they'll be fine. They're both staying with very close friends, and, and it's going to be awesome. Um, and yeah, I, I will hopefully be sharing videos of my fabulous me made wardrobe on my one night mini break with my husband. Tomorrow, we are going to the Calgary Stampede. So I live in Calgary and the Stampede is the biggest rodeo in North America. Uh, it's the greatest outdoor show on earth is their tagline. And so the Stampede is a massive 10 day festival. There's a midway, there's a rodeo, there's check wagon races. Um, there are hundreds of free pancake breakfasts around town during that 10 day period. It's, it's a very Calgary thing. So everybody wears cowboy Western attire to work. Um, there's a giant parade that's happening today. And if you work in the business core of the city, you often get parade day off or half the day off because you literally cannot get into downtown. So they encourage everyone to go with their families and I'm not going with my family because I'd rather um, stay at home and listen to construction sounds. But if you ever have a chance to come to Calgary, come for Calgary during the stampede because it is, it is a sight to see. Um, so I will be putting on my, hopefully I finished my Gilbert dress and I'll be able to put that on and make it a little bit Western with a leather belt and some cowboy boot earrings and um, head down to the Stampede grounds with my family tomorrow and check it out. Um, this is the first Stampede that we will have taken our kids to. So that's exciting. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we make it. But yeah, it's a giant country fair and there are fireworks every night and we live we live downtown, so not far from the Stampede Ground. So I can look out my window and I can see just over the tops of the buildings, we can see the fireworks every night. Um, at about 11.30 at night, they go off. Um, sometimes we go up to the roof of the building and we watch them from there and that's pretty amazing too, but we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, we're in a really festive mood right now. Lots of things to celebrate and look forward to. So I hope that you are having a wonderful summer. If it is summer where you are, that the weather is fine. And if it's not summer where you are, I hope that you are cozy and warm and that you're having a great day and that you're gonna get to do some sewing this weekend. I'll see you again soon.